This is the first day, the first week. Get your kids pumped up for school. Tell your partner, what are we going to do right now? Hey, we're about to go into the lunchroom. Okay, class, what are we about to do? Pick a few students and then say, everyone, what are we about to do? Shout out loud. Okay, cool. I know that's good for elementary, middle school, and high school. You don't have to do the call and respond out loud if you think that's very cheesy, but you can have kids, pick, you can call on kids and still ask them, what are we about to do? Have them interact with each other or even have them be a little teacher up on the board. Like, hey, you teach the class and tell them what we're about to do. Teach the procedure for us, you know, something like that to get them feel like they belong in the classroom. Okay, it's super important that you create and enforce rules. Super important that you make sure that you go over rules on the first day of school. Super Hi there, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, I'm going to share with you all some best things to do and teach on the first day of school. I'm going to include activities, morning work, and some self-care things for you as a teacher to put first. So. The first year can always be very stressful or exciting for you, depending on your mindset and how many years you have been teaching and how confident you feel in your teaching abilities. It's all about growth mindset and it's all about believing yourself. So my self-care tip for you is believe in yourself, know that you are worthy, know that you are called to teach. And even if you don't feel called to teach, know that God put you to teach for a reason. Believe in yourself and just have fun with it. The kids don't know what to do. You know what to do. So if you feel confident in yourself and you feel like I can do this, I know what I'm doing. Even if you don't know it, fake it till you make it. Do your best. Okay. The kids are there for you. They're there to learn. So just have fun with them and let them learn in an engaging and fun way. So that's my little first self-care tip. But another first self-care tip into that is like, try to um, over plan. Over planning is the best thing to do as a teacher because you want things to overflow into the second, the third, or the fourth or fifth day, the whole first week of school because you don't want to be unprepared and not have anything productive and engaging for your students to do because that leads to students getting bored, which can lead to negative behavior because they're not doing what they're supposed to do out of boredom, which leads to difficulty with the classroom management. And you, as a teacher, want to start your first day on a high high positive with classroom management, not on the low. You don't wanna be on a low with classroom management. Also, if you're over preparing yourself with lots of activities and things to do for your kiddos, it's good to have things repeated and overflow into the first week because not every child will show up on the first day or the second day. <laughs> and you still wanna have that class bonding and getting to know you activities for all your students. So the first week of school beginning of the year is all about building positive relationships and establishing a positive classroom culture with your kiddos. You want your students to feel welcome. You want them to be respectful, kind and loving to you and to your classmates. You want the classroom to feel like a home, their second home, like everyone is a family, everyone are friends and they care and love each other, right? So that's my first little wing tip for you. Second best thing to do is to get to school early. Repeat after me, I will get to school early. I will get to school early. Set that alarm clock. Hey, set multiple alarm clocks to wake you up so you can eat breakfast at home, not rush into the drive-thru to get you a coffee and tea. No, get your me time at home. Get dressed. Take a shower. First thing, of course, when you wake up, take your shower. Get dressed. Sit down and have your breakfast. Get that me time so you can mentally get your brain and body ready for the day so you can beat traffic also. When I rush, it makes my whole day go downhill. So I become stressed. My anxiety level goes on high. But if I'm early, I feel more prepared and I'm calm, my less, less anxiety. So when you're early, you're going to feel more confident to just sit in your class. You're here early. Just check in, look in and scope the room. Is there anything that looks out of order? Do you need to fix something? Do you need to change something? Because when you're early, you'll have plenty of time to do last minute changes, okay? So that's the second best thing to do. Super important for your self-care and your mental, ment mentally, right? You wanna have a positive first day. So number three, the third thing you can do also is to have your schedule printed out on a clipboard. So as soon as you get into your classroom, you should have a schedule on your 
clipboard. But if you forgot to print out your schedule, hey, you're early, so print it out, have it on a clipboard, run through everything. You may have made a mistake and you need to go back and fix something in your schedule. Or you're, you have everything ready to go and you're like, yes, now this, I have a visual reminder. I know what is next to the do with the students. So I won't feel out of whack and be like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do next. Oh, they've done this activity really fast. What's the next activity we can do? But you have everything listed on your clipboard of schedule of what to do. As a first year teacher, schedule in a visual schedule on your clipboard and in your classroom is going to be super helpful for you and for your kiddos. And then number four, uh, first, number four, the fourth thing to do as a teacher on the first day of school is having respect for your students by greeting your students. Even if you're in a middle school, high school and your students come into your classroom, it doesn't matter what grade you teach, elementary, middle, high school, when your students enter your classroom, you should have a smile on your face greeting them, right? You don't want them to feel like, hey, this is the worst place to be. You want them to feel happy and welcome. So greet your students, show them that you care, show them that you respect them, show them that you are excited to see their beautiful, handsome faces. You can even have balloons and welcome back to school sign on your door or on the wall next to your classroom door if your door is decorated. You know, just make them feel welcome. Have some song playing in the classroom when they enter. Get them hyped up and excited to learn. This is gonna be an awesome school year. So you want them to feel welcome, excited, and and ready to learn, okay? <laughs> you want each student to feel comfortable as they enter the classroom with your smile and a warm greeting. You show respect and your students will show respect back to you. Now, there are some students who are outliers and may not show you respect right off the bat, or they may be a little shy or upset about being in school, but if you are consistent and continue to be respectful to them, they will eventually be respectful to you, I promise you, okay? It's just consistency and showing that you generally genuinely care about them and you build that relationship with their parents too i'm going to talk about that um in a another video how relationship building with parents is super important to also have a good relationship with their students okay <laughs> but um so that's number four number five it's super important for you to give clear directions verbally to your students and have them written on the board or a powerpoint whatever you use in your classroom you need to be very clear and articulate in what you are telling your students. This is their first day, their first week. They don't know what to do. Some of them may because they've been in the school before, but some of them do not. So you want to explicitly give clear verbally directions, also visually. There are some students who have learning disabilities, who have a special education IP, and you want to make sure that you're giving all the different differentiated accommodations and modifications for them to be successful to learn, okay? It's super, super important that you are differentiating all your lessons. Even when you are speaking, you're making sure you are articulate and you're very clear and explicit. You have students repeat the directions back to you. You ask students to tell each other through like, think like partner, like tell your partner, what are we gonna do right now? Hey, we're about to go into the lunchroom. Okay, class, what are we about to do? Pick a few students and then say, everyone, what are we about to do? Shout out loud. Okay, cool. I know that's good for elementary, middle school, and high school. You don't have to do the call and respond out loud if you think that's very cheesy, but you can have kids, pick, you can call on kids and still ask them, what are we about to do? Have them interact with each other or even have them be a little teacher up on the board. Like, hey, you teach the class and tell them what we're about to do. Teach the procedure for us, you know, something like that to get them feel like they belong in the classroom. Okay. Uh, I forgot my count. I don't even know what, what number is next, but I'm just going to keep um, going on. So <laughs> you need to make sure that you have your student's name on their desk. This is specifically for elementary students um, because elementary students, you have the same group of students and you want them to know where they're going to be sitting down, right? Middle and high school, middle school and high schools, you may not necessarily need a student's name on the desk, but you want to make sure you have a roster right? You want to know who your students are, have their, have the name of the student's roster. I know we take attendance and we have the student's roster, but make multiple copies just in case you may lose them. Have students' names so that you can make sure you're saying the student's name so that you can remember it. It's going to be hard at first to remember all your students' names, but the more you say it, the more you visually see it, the easier it will be to remember their names throughout the month, right? Now let's move on to the next thing. You need to make sure that morning work is on your student's desk. 
this is for elementary students. Uh, elementary teachers, please make sure that you have a morning work as soon as the students enter. So you greeted your students, you shake their hands, or you did an elbow pat, or you said, hey, what's up? Welcome, so excited to be your teacher. Um, your name is on your desk, go find your morning work. But before you do that, make sure you hang your backpack up, your jacket, your coat, your lunchbox, put it in the bin over there and go to your seat and have and get started on your morning work and you'll see your name on your desk. Now the morning work could be any fun, engaging activity. You don't want it to be boring, y'all. This is the first day, the first week. Get your kids pumped up for school. You can have so many fun things for the kiddos to do. There are many activities that I have done in the past. I've done, are you ready for a second grade coloring worksheet? Cause I taught second grade. There's a website called thewordsearch.com. You make your own word puzzle. Here is how it looks on the website. And this is a puzzle that I made. What would be cool is if you made a puzzle with your students' names so that they're finding each other's names, which will help them get to know their classmates even more. You can play this online as well. You can download it and print it just like this, and you can have kids do this in class. Or you can have students work on their names. If you're in kindergarten, you want students to work on their names, doing some fun coloring. You can do the ABCs, whatever you want. There's emoji websites coloringpagesonly.com with many different coloring emojis for the kiddos to do so they can have fun on the first day of school. The really cool thing about the Argue Ready for second grade, first grade kindergarten coloring worksheet is it's fun for the kids. They love to color. You can also quickly access who knows how to add, hmm. who knows how to read their colors, and who knows how to write the correct letters, right, as they're solving the puzzle. And when, and I forgot to say this, so when the students so when the students enter your classroom, make sure that you have their morning work on their desk, their name on their desk, and a pencil case. In that pencil case, make sure they have pencils, erasers, sharpeners, and crayons and markers, just so that they can have things. You don't wanna have scissors and glue. Scissors and glue are not in their desk. Scissors and glue are somewhere in a teacher area in a bin labeled scissors, labeled glue, because you don't want kids to play around with those items and get hurt and you know do crazy things with them right that's some elementary tip for you you can also have early finishers early finisher bin where students choose from the following early finisher bin if they are done with their work their morning work they ate breakfast already and you still have time in the morning and they are bored have an early furniture bin so that they're not going to do something dangerous and disruptive in the classroom. Because first day of school, you're taking attendance, you're trying to get everything ready for the kids, you're welcoming students in the classroom, you're making sure breakfast is served, you're doing a lot in the classroom and you don't want the students to be disruptive, you want them to be productive. So have an early furniture bin. And in the early furniture bin, you can have word searches, coloring pages, puzzles, uh, books, writing worksheets, so many different things. I have an early finisher uh, template on my Teachers Pay Teachers. It's free, so you can download it and you can set it up in your classroom for your kiddos when they finish early, when they finish any assignments early. And this is how it looks right here. Um, it, it's really cool. Just preview it, download it. If you don't like it, it's okay. It's free. Just check it out, okay? Another thing that you should do and teach do on the first day of school is have a morning meeting slot. This is something that you're going to prepare before the first day of school, but you want to have it ready on the first day of school. And I do have a morning meeting slide template on my Teachers Pay Teachers. It's for free as well. You can check that out if you need help with creating a morning meeting for the first day of school for your students. After you have this, after the students have finished eating breakfast, completing their morning work, and also you, you finish taking attendance, you may have time in your classroom for morning meeting. I know some schools do morning meeting. So it'd be really cool for morning meeting for you to do a morning meeting where you tell your, tell your students about you, where they get to know more about their teacher that they're gonna have for the school year. The morning meeting slide would look something like this. So when the morning meeting begins, I will go to this slide here where it says, welcome back. And it'll say, hey, this is the first day of second grade. Are we excited? Are we pumped up? I'm so excited to be here. Even though there's some kids who are not excited, I'm just saying, I'm so excited. It's okay if you're shy. 
we'll get comfortable and we'll be friends and family at the end of the school year, okay? Then we will transition to meet your teacher slide where the students get to know me. We will transition to the morning meeting agenda. After that is emoji check-in to check in with how the students are feeling. I'll go ahead and transition to morning message. After morning message is our calendar math. After calendar math is our Howard University chant, which the students re recite. It's a let's go a call and response. After that is in our class, class mantra to empower the students to study a really positive classroom culture. And we learn our first vocabulary word of the week, which is respect, which builds positive classroom culture again. And then the students go into reciting, hey, H.U., what are we going to do today? I read the words in red. The students read the words in blue. And then we end it off with a positive affirmations video, which the students recite. And since it's their first week of school, I also tell them, their schedule so they then know what is coming ahead and so they are prepared. I do also test students on the first day just to see what they are doing. That's something my school requires just to see what students know in reading and math. And then I ask them, do they have any questions? And it's okay to feel scared. Just try your best and take deep breaths. Community circle is just like morning meeting. It's a time for them to reflect on their day and to tell me how they felt about their day. And I'll go into that and show you um, the closing circle it looks like this um the students do closing circle they have cleanup time cleaning their desk for two minutes they i repeat the closing circle rules one voice being respectful participating and sitting quietly and then i go into their end of the day chant teaching them about how motivate yourself it's okay today was not the, the best day but you tried your best as long as you tried your best at school and then i would go into check-in again how are you feeling today what was, the, what was so good about today? What was your favorite part of today? Why was it good? What was the most difficult part of today? And then I want them to think of someone in your class who showed curiosity, optimism, responsibility, and excellence. And I want them to raise a silent hand, shouting out a friend who showed that core value. And then I want the friend to say thank you when they receive a shout out compliment. Then on Fridays, we have show and tell, and we'll end our closing circle with a so long, my friend, song because time is running out and it's dismissal time and so that's what i do this is the so long my friend song that i uh, got from out of the box which was really cool and then i'll that's it have a wonderful day it's dismissal time let's get ready to go home so i'm almost done i know i've been talking a lot but i just want to make sure you have a wonderful and successful first day of school so it's super super important that you create and enforce rules super important that you make sure that you go over rules on the first day of school for second grade and higher kiddos you can create a class you can have your class create rules together and have the students sign their names or you can have the rules made up already have a standard rule chart doesn't matter as long as you have rules on the first day and you're enforcing them consistently reinforcing the rules by remaining calm and not going back and forth with your student shows respect, right? Reinforcing that respect, not going back and forth. This is the rule. We know the rules because we're here to create a safe environment. Making sure that you have procedures and expectations, explicitly giving clear directions for your students. When you're teaching these directions and procedures and call to attentions, you wanna make sure that your kids understand them. So do a lot of role play and call response, have kiddos act it out, which is fun. They love to act out. Um, make sure that they, uh, you know, sometimes be the teacher and, and they, they lead the classroom by showing that procedure, they show the expectation, they show the rules. It's really important to have the kiddos involved in it, having them repeat it over and over so they can get, they can understand it. And it's super important for you as a teacher to respond to misbehavior quickly within 10 to 20 seconds of, of you seeing it. Don't like delay. No, as soon as you see the misbehavior, quickly respond to it with a calm tone remind them the rules and say second warning third warning this is it you know the consequence you lose a point or you get a clip down or you just get uh, your name written on the board and every time you are doing something that you're not supposed to you're not following the rules i'm going to erase a letter out of your name when all letters are gone out of your name there's going to be a serious consequence like no recess because I've given multiple opportunities and only students who are following rules are going to be rewarded with fun activities. So it's super important that you are consistently reinforcing these rules, have procedures, expectations, have voice levels, telling your kiddos, hey, we're at level zero, that means you're reading, you're focused on your independent works, or level one, we're whispering, you're talking with your partner, 
you're doing like partner work or at level three or level two, you're talking aloud to the class, you're raising your hand or level three, you're up in front of the classroom, you're presenting your work to the class, you want them to hear. Level four is like recess voice, like, ah, we're going wild, going crazy, right? <laughs> And then um, teaching them like nonverbal hand signals, like level one, and not level one, finger, <laughs> pen, number one, if your finger is a pencil, two, bathroom, I need to go to the bathroom. Number three is water, W, looks like a water, four is a tissue, and five, I have a question. This helps you as a teacher understand what your kids need. You're teaching a lesson and you see a, a hand, oh, they have a question. You're teaching less and you see a two, oh, you just say, go to the bathroom, yes, thumbs up. And they go to the bathroom, you give them an eye contact and say, yes, you can go. And you still continue with your lesson. You see four tissue, say, yes, you can go. And you still continue your lesson. You don't have to stop your lesson and say, hey, what do you need? And they say, I need to go, to your... no, you just know what they want. You say, go. You don't... And, and later on through the year, you'll see that you don't even have to say anything. You could just be teaching like four plus two, and you give eye contact to them equals six and you keep going. Eventually these nonverbal singles helps the classroom run smoothly, helps your lesson run smoothly. You don't have to be interrupted and disrupted, right? And this allows the students to ask for help appropriately. There's only one teacher and about 20 plus students in your classroom. And it gets chaotic when everyone's just talking all at once and asking different things. It makes it run smoothly. I taught 27 students actually 80 students because I had three different second grade classes. I taught writing to all three different second grade classes. So that was like 80 plus students. And this helped with my classroom management. I would remind students who forgot, you know, to do the hand signals. And I would praise students who remembered to do these hand signals, remember the rules, which helped other students because they seeing the students getting praise, it helped reinforce other students to use the hand signals and follow the rules because they saw other students getting points for following the rules, for following procedures and being respectful in the class. And you can also have a chart that says, what kind of teacher do you want? On the chart, you can have the kiddos tell you, do you want your teacher to be kind, happy, write it down. And we, you as a teacher can always look back to that when you're having really bad days and you're like, you know what, it's, things are not working out. And you look at your chart, you know what? They said they want me to kind, be kind and positive and happy. You know, I'm just gonna be happy. I'm gonna be funny. They just want, to have a fun loving teacher. So I'm gonna to try to, you know, be that for them, even though today is not the best day. I'm just gonna to try to turn a negative into a positive day. And you can also have um classroom scavenger hunts, would you rather games, indoor recess slides. I have an indoor recess slide that I made in case of a rainy day. You never know if it might be raining the first week of school and the kids can't go out to recess. So here I have an indoor recess. Google Slides that I created for my kiddos to choose. It's super fun, the kiddos love it. You can find it on Teachers Pay Teachers as well and it is for free, okay? Then on um, the end of the day activity is like this positive affirmation fortune teller. It's on Teachers Pay Teachers too as well and it's for free as well. It doesn't have to be end of the day activity. It could be in the cool down corner or throughout the day, whatever you wanna use this, but this is a really good positive affirmation fortune teller for students to build their self-esteem and build the confidence in themselves. At the end of the day is take a class photo or individual student photos to document the first day. You can take it at the beginning of the day as students enter, but that kind of gets chaotic with taking attendance, with breakfast, with greeting students, with telling them where to get their seats, with getting papers. It's just, it's very a lot at the first, first minute, few minutes in the morning. So you may want to take pictures during lunch or recess or um, throughout the day when they're like just relaxing and doing some fun stuff. But you want to take indiv individual pictures on the first day of school and like a class photo if all your students are there. Whenever all your students are there, try to take a class photo with everyone so they can see, wow, this is how we looked at the beginning of the year. And now this is how we look at the end of the year. So so those are all the things that I wanted to share with you all on what you should do and teach on the first day of school to help you mentally prepare yourself to be an amazing teacher. You are an amazing teacher, so believe in yourself and have the confidence to do your best. I hope these tips were super helpful for you because it's all about mindset and having a positive mindset. Believe in yourself and you will do amazing this first day of school. This whole year will be wonderful for you. Again, I'm going to share some different tips in my next videos about 
classroom management and attention getters. So watch out for those videos coming soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was super helpful for you. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful blessed day and see you soon. Bye.